Hey everyone, my name is Elisa and welcome back to my channel. If you've never been here before, I create all my clothes from scratch and I make it so that you can maybe recreate some of them for yourself at home by doing it in the DIY style. I often share my patterns, my designs, tell you everything I know about fabric and that's what this channel is about. So today I am going to be tackling a linen dress, a short linen day dress, but it's gonna come with a twist because it's gonna have a cut out on one side, which uh, comes with its own set of challenges, <laughs> especially in the pattern construction process and in the cutting process because I ended up with four individual pieces for my two front sides and my two back sides. But I'm just gonna show you what I did. So let's go. Alrighty, let's tackle this project. I already made the pattern yesterday and I made it based on a dress that I already made last year because it also had like a gather hole in the bust area. And I used the same principles to create a hole here. But the pattern looks really funky. Let me show you. So this is the front. Um, so this is the hole and once this hole is going to be gathered up the center front is going to straighten like that. That's the plan and the same applies to the back. However, I think I have to cut this in a certain way because I only want the hole to be on one side. At least that's how I thought it was going to be. So I need to cut it very specifically and therefore I decided to create a mock-up which is going to extend the process of making this dress like quite a bit. But I, I want to succeed. Like I don't, you know, I want this to work out. So <laughs> I'm going to make a mock-up, right? So I'm using this calico fabric and I'm going to now go ahead and try out the cutting process and see how that works. And then I can gather up the hole and see if it fits me. And once that is done, I can cut the actual fabric because this linen is just so pretty. I love this brick color. And I want to make sure I make good use of it, if you know what I mean. Let's go. Okay, so I just very sloppily assembled this dress as quickly as I could. And now I'm going to gather up this hole to see if it has the effect that I want it to have. I'm just going to use this string here. Nothing too fancy. Now I'm looking for a safety pin. I'm going to try to fill this through this terribly sewn channel that I made here. Later, I'm going to create some lining for the dress because the linen is a bit see-through anyway, so it needs lining. And when I have lining, um, I can nicely overturn the circle and not have it so warped and ugly <laughs> looking. It straightens the side seam and takes away the ease. So we have this hole here now, which is what we want. I think it could be even a bit bigger than this. This is a bit small, I think. But now I have the width on the other side where I don't want to hold. So I need to add a dart here to take away that ease that I don't need. All right, so first mock-up done. We can see there is the hole here. It is overall maybe a tad large. I like the neckline. I think that looks good. And... The back looks fine too. I actually, I don't know if I'm digging this line here. Maybe that looks cool. Because otherwise that line wouldn't be here. So that could be. But let's see where this takes us. All right, so happy with the mock-up. I need to transfer that later. But now I actually have to go out and get some lunch. And also I need to get some lining for the dress because the linen is a bit see-through. And also I can ensure nicer finishes if the whole dress is lined with the hole and everything. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do now. So the next step now is basically just to cut the pieces apart, um, cut them even so that I can use the calico as pattern pieces. All right. 
right, so I just spent some time on taking apart all of the pattern pieces and making a few adjustments. And I honestly forgot how much fun it is to make mock-ups because it's a little bit like a puzzle challenge and it kind of ensures that you end up with a beautiful result and with something that fits you perfectly. And this is really what you want, isn't it? So uh, it's just a reminder for myself to always make a mock-up for <laughs> new patterns that I'm making just because, you know, you always end up with something so much better than you would have without that step. So these are all of the individual pattern pieces. They look a bit funky, I know. So we have the back piece here and the back piece here. And these two are the front pieces with both this and this being the center front. And I think I'm going to transfer this onto paper now because I want to hold on to this pattern because it's so cute. Um, before I actually cut it from my fabric. So that's the next step. way longer than it should have. I basically spent all day doing the mock-up, cutting the pieces, making adjustments, and uh, I, I have everything now. So all of the pieces are cut in the shell and in the lining. So I'm ready to start sewing, which I think I will do now. I'm not sure how far I'll get today, but uh, I'll, I'll give it a go. I also learned from my mistake last time and I washed the denim that I bought. No more color bleeding in the sewing process for me. So we have all of these pieces here now and I think what I will do first is to work on the center back and center front seams which is here. So this area is the center back and this area is the center front. So I have two cohesive pieces. I think that's how I'll start for both the shell and lining. Alright, so all of the pieces are sewn together in the center seams. So we have the back here. And what I'm gonna do now is gonna, I'm gonna press all of the shell pieces with the seam allowance on one side, and then I'm gonna top stitch it down for a flat, nice, clean look. I'll call it a day for today. I think uh, progress was made. Let's reconvene tomorrow. Good morning, it's the next day and this is what I'm looking at right now. I've got all of the pieces put together so I have one cohesive back and front for both the lining as well as the shell. And now we can get to assembling everything. I think there is a way to overturn all of this quite easily. However, at the same time, I also haven't quite figured out yet how I'm going to do it so that I can also nicely overturn the hole that we're gonna gather up here on the side later. First of all, I definitely have to make sure that my back is symmetrical because it doesn't feel like it is. It really does not feel like it's symmetrical. The armhole is the same length, however, because of the way it was cut, I think it's just moving in a different direction. Maybe that already helped a little bit at least. I think I'm first going to overturn the front shell with the front lining. And I would do that by placing the shell right side facing me and then placing the lining right side facing the shell. And then I would start pinning around the neck hole as well as the armholes. So I have a crisp finish there. I've just sewn around all my neck hole and armhole lines and I measured them out beforehand just to be sure that I end up with a symmetrical result because by cutting every piece individually and not having them like on a double layered piece of fabric, they just behave a little bit differently. So I decided to apply some guidelines that I can follow and now I'm gonna cut back my seam allowance. And now I'm also gonna snip the seam allowance in these corners, making sure I'm not cutting through my seam. 
but close enough so when I overturn everything I have a crisp corner and now I should be able to overturn this area now I can take it to my iron and give it a really good press so everything lies flat now overturned and pressed my entire neckline and armhole situation both in the front and in the back so you can see that we have something resembling a dress ish now the potentially tricky part begins which is to suss out how to overturn the rest of the dress so that we can still access the hole that we want to gather up later and I think I'm going to start by overturning the side of the dress that is straight. So I'm going to take that side. I'm going to basically just place back and front on top of each other like this. So this is how we would sew them together. But we're not going to obviously just stitch that. We're going to overturn it, which means I'm taking these two points, these two end points of my armhole in the front and in the back. And then I'm going to open up the shell and lining like this and I'm going to pin this point together and from this point onwards I'm pinning together the lining and I'm pinning together the shell. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so that side seam is closed and looks really good and clean and now the tricky part begins <laughs> the other side which has the gathered hole eventually or will hold it hold it eventually now I need to suss out what to close first the side seams or the hole I think I'm going to close the hole first and then I can potentially maybe do this the normal way and this I might have to do like I do with the shoulder straps by basically just pushing one side into the other and then top stitching it. That means I'm gonna try to overturn this curve for the hole first, which means right side and right side of the shell of the lining are supposed to face each other. So I'm gonna start by pinning along the curve so that the two right sides are facing. This is definitely a trust the process process. <laughs> this comes from having lined and overturned lots of garments before. I kind of feel like I know what I'm doing. It's a little bit like, I don't know how to describe it best. You have to have some 3D thinking for this for sure, which is something you acquire if you sew a lot. Um, so you can anticipate how things are going to behave. And this is one of those moments trying not to tug or pull or add tension to the curve, just pinning it together in its natural state. Okay, so now that I've done this, I can sew along this line. All right, we are getting close to finishing this up. I have now repeated the same steps in the back, so I have a nice and crisp half moon shape both in the front and in the back. Now the next step is to overturn the remaining length of the skirt here. And I'm gonna do that the exact same way as I did previously on the other half. Yay! Success, I think. Yes, so the rest of the skirt is now closed. Now what remains is to close upper half of the side seam here and I'm going to do this the same way I'm planning to do the straps and that is by overturning one side preferably the one that feels a little bit bigger and giving that a press and then I'm gonna grab the other raw half and I'm going to try and feed it in here this looks good to me it looks like it could work and now I'm going to carefully take this to my machine and top stitch it. Yes, you guys, success, look at this. Everything is closed, except the shoulder straps. I'm gonna do them in a minute. Now, before I finish up the gathered hole, I'm gonna just try this on to see what it looks like to make sure everything's the way I think it is. All right, so 
this is what we're looking at right now. Everything looks super clean and nice. But this is what you want. This huge gap here. And now we're going to gather it up. Alright, now the most exciting part happens, which is we are going to create a tunnel around this opening so that we can then gather it up with some string. You can also use elastic. So I'm going to simply do this by making sure I'm leaving open just a little bit so that I can enter the channel later. So I'm going to make sure I leave it open down here. And other than that, I'm just going to sew around this hole with an equal distance to my edge, probably about roughly one centimeter. So I create a channel around here. Now I'm going to grab a safety pin and some string and I'm going to attach the safety pin to the end of my string. And now I go in between the lining of the shell and I try to find the channel so I can start to feed the string through the channel. Alright, so I now fiddle through these strings and smart me obviously i couldn't go through here because i had top stitched this section so this was closed off so basically what i did is i opened these seams and guided the string out on each side and sewed again on top of them so they were fixated so there are two ends in here now which means i used two strings and now when i pull on the strings i can gather up the hole and i'm gonna try on the dress now so i can gather the hole as much as i think it looks good all right so the hole is gathered up and now all that's left to do is to finish up the hem. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did do so, then please consider hitting that subscribe button and the like button because that tells the algorithm that you actually enjoyed what you just watched and that's important. Thank you very much. I hope I see you next time. Bye!